sloat zai. At least pretend to be serious as I. It's been more than a month since our last case. Watson, in case you haven't noticed, I'm in the middle of an experiment right now. And what greater is that? I have set myself up for the daunting task of finding out which part of the candle burns the fastest. We're not facing a flat surface. The top one, though. Ah, yes, that would seem natural, would it not? However, one must not forget that when the top heats up, the melted wax makes its way down the bottom where it will accumulate. But in this case, it makes its way out of sight. You will pay for that. You're not here with a request for me to solve something. That must be clear. In fact, a very small expression on your face. It would appear that you have some information to me. Yet your posture indicates how close you are. You seem far from impressed by my real deductions, which is not usually the case with the common folk. It just rush past the wretched nanny at me. Mr. Holmes, it's very nice to finally meet you in person. I've been wondering how to go about this. <coughs> now it appears, seems no better way than to really jump into it. Quite right. Why hold back? But. Please, I would like to see how much of this I can figure out by myself. By all means, you mind if I spoke my By it? all means, sir. Now, judging by the way your legs are crossing your arms position, I think it's safe to say that you have no real intention of getting up anytime soon. Hence, it's safe to assume that you used to come to the left. Perhaps a little too comfortable for that rather impressive chair of mine, it seems to be rudimentary to you. Oh, 
Mr. Holmes, please don't think of it like that. My lord, I myself have got to sit on the floor most times. We used to much more than this. You are the royalty or a police for the night of the world. But, judging by the way you the old pipe, I have someone else like to feel. I'm going to assume that it is the latter. Fascinating. 
This, this is wonderful. So Joy, how is that you came up with the inspiration for a character like this? <laughs> Dr. Joseph Bell. I worked under him as a clerk at the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary. I'll get a position. Of course, of course, doctor. That's why I write from your point of view. One. See, doctor, you and I are more alike than you think. Even I was in the prime of my days. It's very painful and frustrating that I can't continue anymore. I gave you that angst as well. Remember your ugly days from Blackheath? Uh, how is it that you know of that? Home, oh, can you tell this? It would appear so, Watson, but our visitor, we tell us what it got. He's caught. Probably he studied there. That is a possibility. Oh, yes. Sir so, Doyle, why does Watson believe that I don't like his Mary? <laughs> because you don't, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> really? I myself had two marriages. And none of them went as well as I would have liked them to. I guess my lack of belief in the system of number three showed in you. And poor Watson has to pay the price. Fascinating. On some level, that does make sense. Holmes, you're not sitting here actually believing this, are you? Ah, dear Watson, I do apologize for you coming in late. See, Sir Doyle and I have an agreement, but I pretend to believe everything that he tells me. I am merely fulfilling the duty that any literary creation would do in my place. Sir, I have not answered whatever questions you have for me. Fascinating. <coughs> Sir Doyle, why is it nice to avoid the base of these two characters sitting in front of you? Indeed. I'll see that just after I almost ended writing short stories and novels about the two of you. Really? Where did this end find itself in my life? I decided to kill you by throwing you over a waterfall. The story was called The Final Problem. But there was a huge outcry. The crowd went mad. My mother was furious. <laughs> and I had to bring you back. Because here we are. Watson, take a bow. We are with celebrities in this world. I cannot believe that you are listening to all this. Watson. So, Lord, I insist you leave. It's your house, Dr. Watson. I will honor your rules. Do you really mean to tell me that if Sir Doyle were to leave right now, you would never again doubt him? I do, Holmes. I have learned enough. And I believe you should wrap this up too. <coughs> Let us have a business, Holmes. Ask him one question. One question alone that only you would have an answer to. Then we'll see how much of this real and how much of Sir Doyle's imagination. I would leave the house if you want me to, Doctor. I will answer whatever questions you have for me. Fine. <laughs> Alright, whom I will. Sir Doyle, what is my middle name? <clears throat> Dr. Watson, your middle name means James in Scottish Gaelic. That's what your wife calls you. And that's what you've told her. But your actual name, Dr. John H. Watson, is Hamish. Watson, get a grip, man. Watson. Any doctor would know that it takes a lot to bring down a physician and a former athlete. Dr. Watson had never shared that information with anyone, neither me nor his wife. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I didn't intend to shock you. 
and you have to live like this. No, so Lord, that's exactly what you tell me when you came here. Tell me what you're doing here. I've explained, Mr. Holmes, every time I end a set of stories, I go and visit my characters to let them know that I'm moving on. You said you intended on killing me earlier. This is when I went over the waterfall? Yes. Why was there no visit then? Oh, somehow, probably, I knew that I wasn't done with you. And now you are. Tell me, Sir Lord, what happens to your characters when you're done with them? Do they cease to exist? Sorry, Mr. Holmes, I don't have an answer for that. You see, I don't see them again. Tell me, Sir Lord, how is it that I am not here this time in complete detail? Make yourself comfortable, Mr. Holmes. <coughs> <coughs> Wait, sir. So sit down for so long. You might find that one. Think about it for a second. How many other individuals are there in this world like you? How many people can look at a man in public and say that he's a retired Marine with a job like anybody else? still nursing an injury from his sailing days. All of this from one simple look, one glance. It isn't too ordinary, is it? Dr. Bell had this, but his was with his patients who came in with injuries. There are very few consulting detectives who can actually solve a case by just listening to it, read off of a letter. impossible, these skills that you possess, this impeccable ability to look at a person and judge everything about them. These skills don't exist. They are there because I write them for you, I create it for you. They are unheard of and will continue to be unheard of for years to come. Mr. Holmes. I've given you a fairly athletic frame and you don't even work out. You don't even believe in it. But yet, you continue to be much more fitter than your peers as well as your counterparts. So with both the skill and the physique, this makes you somewhat of a superhero. You're a fictional character, Mr. Holmes, and that is why you're blessed with both brawn as well as the brains. Real people have flaws, flaws that make them human. People don't exist until they have flaws. What is your flaw? That you're socially awkward? No, no, Mr. Holmes. That is what makes you endearing. That is what people love to read about you. And that is what I write. <coughs> the very fact that a character does not conform to the norms of the society to live above them is why you exist. People love you because, because what they write for you. The number of great stories, great books written, which will have characters that don't fit in and are geniuses in their own respect. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes. I'm very, very sorry to say this, but you do not exist. Holmes. Watson, get out. <laughs> Sorry. Come back in six minutes. Why six minutes? That's all I need. Doyle, this is my turn now. You say you walked here. 
not to an entity, not in a magic card, but plain walked here for a few blocks of time. Is that correct? Correct. And you forced it that both me and Dr. Watson are well fictitious. Yes. Then by default, Mrs. Hudson and the dog are <coughs> really fictitious. Right, right. Brilliant. Extend this argument further onto Baker Street. Our neighbors are well fictitious. The Baker Street is regular. The group of children we used to be my informants before Dr. Watson are well fictitious. These children have families, families which are part of a large gang which walks around in the residential areas. Hence, by your logic, the thieves and the thief of a imaginary. The goods that they steal are equally fictitious as they're being stolen by fictitious people. And the goods that are recovered are recovered by a corpse. But wait, if goods are fictitious, corpses are fictitious as well. You see where I'm going with this toy. This picture keeps getting bigger and bigger until the whole of London is unreal. And you are the only real individual in the city. If anyone, and I mean anyone, were listening to you, you would testify open court that you were raving mad and you should be jailed. But that's just one instance, Doyle. Shall we take another? <coughs> You claim to have me. If that were the case, then you don't know exactly what I was going to say this afternoon. You don't know exactly what I was going to stop you, and what you'd have to say if you to leave you. But none of that has happened, Doyle. None of that. And there's the obvious flaw. If you and me are having this argument here, who's in writing, Doyle? My dear Doyle. If you really wish me to be the superhero that you say I am, then you would know that we could go at this all day long, and my superior intellect would leave you in want of a better argument. If you really believe that I would let you come into my home and challenge me to a battle of wits, I would let you come out and talk. If you really wish me, Doyle, you would know that such a character would never accept the so, Lord, you establish two, well, okay, let's see, two basic things. One, the whole of London is rather imaginary, and you are the only real individual in this And two, and much more importantly, this sort of intellectual duel that we had is exactly the sort of thing that I, Sherlock Holmes, pride on. And if you would challenge me, I will be expand to its bitter end. <coughs> Ah, so go I forgot. I'm just going to be left to say this. <coughs> you ask me vicious languages for the outside. Yeah. 